Welcome to my weekly market roundup, 19th April 2020. I am Sagan Nandi. I used to work in IT, mostly based in Singapore. I have retired now and I am living in Thailand, swing trading stocks using the Q systems and techniques that I developed. You may watch this and other trading videos on my YouTube channel, Trading Profitably and contact me using my email id tradingprofitably at gmail.com I regularly share live stock analysis on my traders forum sagannandi.com and also on my twitter handle sagannandi All these resources are open to the public and you are most welcome to make use of them. Disclaimer this demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual, I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts and then demonstrate the use of 360 degrees analysis where you can align the forces from the market level, sector industry level, fundamental level and technical level with your trades giving you truly high probability low risk trades. These are the queue systems that I will use during this market roundup. For technical analysis I will use Q Elite that runs on trade station and Q Global that runs on Metastar. For sector industry rotation analysis, I will use Q Edge that runs on Metastock Zenith data. For stock fundamental and peer analysis, I will use Q Vital also running on Metastock Zenith. And for index constituent analysis, I will use Q Index again running on Metastock Zenith. That was the last slide of my presentation. I will now continue with the live system. I am beginning my commodities analysis with oil ETF USO. Looking at it using the weekly daily at a glance template. This week price drop. It displayed extreme bearish pressure. However, the Backdrop candle color is remaining neutral, that is yellow. In the daily last week, I mentioned there was no trade setup in oil. This week price fell further. Friday's traffic light candle color is remaining red. It is too close to the lower boundary to take any short trade. It is also oversold shown by the stretch band indicator. It is too late to take any short trade in oil. Instead, if price can go up from here and displace a stretch release signal, that may give us a box long trade setup next week. Gold ETF GLD The weekly backdrop color is remaining bullish, however the shape is bearish with a long upper tail. This week price in fact dropped a little bit. You can see that from the activity bar being in red color. Last week in the daily chart gold closed at this point. 
at that time I mentioned that it was not the right time to buy gold because price was close to the upper boundary level. And I had also explained that the optimal time to buy gold for swing trading was when it broke out of the memory resistance on this day with a gap up open. That was the optimal time to buy gold. You could take a long entry near the lower end of that daily candle and hold on to gold until it went to the upper boundary. That was very useful analysis because those who bought gold at the close of Friday one week ago is now having a loss because this Friday's close is in fact lower than the previous Friday's close. Right now there is no Q trade setup in gold. Next let me look at the one month sector performance. This is a snapshot from two weeks ago. Not this week, not the previous week but two weeks ago. At that time only one sector was up and ten sectors were down. Consumer staples was up. All the other sectors were down shown by the red bar coming to the left of the zero line. That was two weeks ago. What happened after that? This is the same sector analysis one week ago. That time all the sectors went up and they went up with very large percentage. The market changed from bearish to bullish one week ago. And what happened this week? This is the snapshot at the end of this Friday. Now the sectors are mixed. In fact, four went up and seven went down. Overall, it is more bearish than bullish. Which sectors went up most? The top three sectors are healthcare, consumer staples, and communication services. All of these are defensive sectors. The fourth sector that went up is information technology. It went up by a small percentage and that too probably because some very large cap stocks went up significantly the likes of Amazon etc. All the other seven sectors went down. That is showing how the market started bearish two weeks ago changed to very bullish nature one week ago and now this week it changed back to mixed to bearish. That is what we can get from the sector level analysis. Let's see what further insight we can derive from the market ETF analysis. S&P 500 ETF SPY in the weekly chart backdrop candle color and shape both are bullish. In the daily chart price is in an uptrend. It is too close to the upper boundary level to take any long trade. The last optimal buy point was on this day when it gave a go with flow trend following long trade setup. There is no Q trade setup in SPY right now. NASDAQ ETF QQQ. This is continuing to be the strongest of the four market ETFs shown by the relative performance line tilting up. This week has a strongly bullish shape candle and the backdrop color is also bullish. In the daily it is too close to the upper boundary. It is overbought for many days. 
I will avoid buying QQQ right now like SPY the optimal buy point was on this day using a go with flow trend following long trade setup Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA it is similar to SPY weekly backdrop color and shape both are bullish However, it is underperforming S&P 500 shown by the relative performance line tilting down. In the daily, price is close to the upper boundary. I will avoid taking a long position in DIA right now. Russell 2000 ETF IWM Backdrop color is bullish. Cyan, the shape is also bullish. However, the CTF dropped this week, shown by the red color in activity bar. In the daily, after displaying the bullish headwind possible reversal signal, it nicely went up. Now it is close to the upper boundary level. There is no trade setup in IWM at present. Time to make a call on my market outlook. Last week in my market roundup I mentioned that the market was bullish and my trading outlook was neutral. That is, I was not sure where the higher probability trades were going to come from. Therefore, I was ready with both the directions. If you look at the forum posts, also look at my Twitter tweets, you will see that last week most if not all of my trades were taken in the long direction except probably few day trades that I took using the short direction. I analyzed the market to be bullish, my trading direction bias to be neutral and I ended up taking mostly long trades. What about this week? This week the market ETFs all are bullish in the weekly chart and they are also bullish in the daily chart. However, all the four market ETFs are close to the daily upper boundary level that is too extended for me to take a new long trade. And when that is true for all the four market ETFs, many of the stocks are also expected to be extended to the upside. I will avoid taking a long position in such extended or overbought stocks. Also, if you look at the sector level, this week is weaker than the previous week. More sectors went down than went up. Therefore, though the ETFs are showing continued bullishness, if you look under the hood, the sectors are showing weakness. Looking at that, I will continue with my market outlook to be bullish, however, trade bias outlook to be neutral. Next week, I will see how the market is moving and decide on my primary trading direction long on short based on that. Q traders like to buy stocks only when the sector, industry, fundamental, technical, all the forces are aligned. They know about the sector industry rotation in real time using this system QH. Here you can look at the sector rotation happening in real time using the heat map and scorecard. Any sector that is in cyan color is strong and any sector that is in magenta color is weak. You can also look at the industry rotation in real time. Sometimes you may also look at indices. Q traders who are using Q, Edge, Vital, 
an index they also have access to definitive indices these indices are not updated in real time by definitive they are updated at the end of the day you may look at the indices at the end of the week and then try to find out the strongest indices drilled out to their constituents and try to find buying opportunities from there let me demonstrate in q vital in the universe tab i have provided all the 197 definitive indices for the usa market you can copy them go to the home and paste it in the manual list it is retrieving data about the indices I don't store any data on my computer everything is retrieved in real time from Refinitive once it is updated you may go to the stock tab in this case these are not stocks these are the Refinitive indices because indices are broader than stocks it may make sense to look at the five day performance you can double click the column header to sort it in this case it is sorted in ascending order if you double click again it will reverse the sort order and now you have all the definitive indices in descending order which index is the best performer over five days it is this one what exactly is this index and what are the constituents you may click on this index constituent analysis icon after highlighting the row that will take you to q index it will use the same index as root stock and you can see it has retrieved the constituents also retrieve detailed data about the constituents what can you see on friday let me change the color on friday 82 percent of the stocks in this index that is definitive united states department stores index 82 percent of those stocks went up over the previous two days all the stocks went up and over five days 64 percent of the department stores went up let's have a look at the constituent stocks you can click the constituent button that will take you to the stock tab and these are the stocks you can find etc in the list it went up by 13 point seven five percent this way you could buy etc based on a forum post that i submitted earlier let's review that post this is my traders forum sagannandi.com here i regularly share live stock analysis under the category sagar nandis trade ideas i shared an idea on etsy a few days ago you may go into the category and look for etsy or you may come to the search box and type the ticker symbol etsy this is the post i shared 16 days ago let me scroll up i shared it 16 days ago on april 3rd this is how the chart looked like at that time in the daily chart it was breaking out of the memory resistance after creating a higher low 
and the traffic light candle color turned green. The thrust and jump indicators both in the weekly as well as daily were pointing to possible reversal. You could consider it as a breakout long setup. However, I didn't suggest buying the stock at the close of this day. Why? Because the stock was in a downtrend. It broke out of memory resistance. However, if a stock is in the downtrend when it is breaking out, I like to have either extreme bullish pressure or bullish activity, very high or extreme high activity in the daily chart. That was not there when there are some signals but not enough signals to buy a stock at the close of the market. My approach is to watch the stock next day using fine-tuned real-time chart and try to take a long position near market open using precision entry technique. And that opportunity had come the very next day. Let me explain using the fine-tuned real-time chart. This is HC daily chart. I am using Q Elite on Trade Station. Here was the memory resistance line and on this day it broke out of the memory resistance. However, there was no bullish pressure on that day. Therefore, I waited for the next day and tried to enter it near market open. In trade station, I can align the bars across daily chart, 5 minute chart, 10 minute chart, etc. I aligned the charts and now I will go to the fine tune chart template. This was the day when I was watching it using fine tune chart. Currently, I am using 10 minute chart so that I can fit the entire history since then on a single chart. However, when I am using the chart in real time in the morning session, I tend to use 5 minute interval, not 10 minute interval. That day, soon after open, it broke out of the early range high, giving me an early range breakout entry opportunity right on this candle. For the day, my stop was just below early range low. The stop was never approached. Instead, price went up and closed near the high of the day. On that day, I had much more reward profit than the risk taken in the trade. If you took it as a day trade, it was in fact a gap long trading opportunity on the fine tune chart and it was also a breakout trading opportunity using the daily chart. If you took it as a day trade, you could book profit or you could hold on to it as a swing trade. And if you did that, it continued to go up giving very large profit by the close of this Friday relative to the very small risk that you initially took. If we go back to the daily chart, now you can see that you could take the trade near the lower end of this daily bar somewhere here and by this Friday's close you have a significant profit. On Friday it closed right at the memory resistance line. Looking at that 
Q trader should book profit at least partial profit with discipline and if they are holding partial position they may apply trailing stop to make sure that profit doesn't erode in case the stock differences from the memory resistance line. This is a very nice example where you could use the breakout from memory resistance as an entry point and then touching the subsequent memory resistance as an exit point. Memory lines are useful both for entry and exit. Breakout from memory can be used for entry and touching a memory can be used as exit. You may learn more detail about these techniques from the books that I put together in the Traders Forum. If you go back to the Traders Forum, the home page, there is this category Q Learning Center. If you look into this category, you will find all the books on Q trading systems and techniques. Other than my stock analysis, you will also find stock analysis by one of the Q traders, Rick. Someone asked me, somebody from the forum, if Mr. Rick is helping me. No, he is not helping me. He is a top level executive in one of the largest American companies. If anything, he could probably hire 10 people like me to help him. He is sharing some very nice stock analysis. One of the stocks that he shared today after Friday's market close was on CNK. He used the top-down analysis and showed that the communication services sector was up. Then he found this stock CNK in communications services sector in the movies and entertainment industry. On Friday, it went up by more than 16%. He found it from the Q inside the best performing undervalued stocks. Rick also shared the Q fundamental and peer analysis. CNK is undervalued. It has robust earnings quality and a short squeeze potential. This is a more detailed fundamental snapshot showing the undervaluation again, a short squeeze potential, earnings quality. And you can also see it has a very high dividend yield and it is nicely going up over last 10 days, 5 days, two days and one day. Over last 10 days, it has gone up by more than 60%. Finally, Q traders buy only if there is a valid trade setup. In this case, the weekly backdrop color changed to cyan. And that happened after the weekly thrust and jump indicators were at extreme low levels. From those levels, a recovery is likely. The thrust and jump indicators in daily are also starting to go up and the daily OBV is also showing that bulls are starting to buy. That is also clear from the activity bars in the weekly chart as well as the activity bars in the daily chart. 
the recent parts are green bars and they are showing higher than usual activity level on friday it broke out of the memory resistance broke out of the triangle pattern that is a sideways move because there was a triangle pattern the move was sideways prior to the breakout it was not in a downtrend not in an uptrend also and not in a downtrend also it was in a sideways market and then it broke out when a stock breaks out from a sideways move then i may not need to wait for the extreme bullish pressure or extreme high activity i could take a long position at friday's close itself and because friday's candle had a gap up move i could put stop just below friday's low rick made a very nice top down analysis on this stock cnk if you scroll down you will find that i made a peer analysis and found another possible buying opportunity in the same industry but not with a breakout setup but a go with flow trend following long trade setup i will not go through that detail now you may refer to the forum to see how you can find a stock maybe using q insight and then use peer analysis to find alternative buying opportunities as well time to summarize the market etfs are bullish however they are extended near the upper boundary level i will be cautious before buying any technically overbought stock the sectors also weaken more sectors went down than went up and the sectors that went up most of them are in defensive areas that is another reason to be cautious still my market view is bullish what about my trading bias my trade direction bias is neutral that is i am going to decide my actual trade direction based on how the market and how the individual stocks move next week that is all that i plan to share in today's session thank you for attending i look forward to seeing you in my next session have a great week and trade profitably